fuck that. I'm using our new breakfast sandwich maker box as a as a stand to do our before the show show until we can buy one at Office Depot. But by the way, if I may, this could be a best thing ever. I bought it. My spouse said that I would never use it, and we've used it four times already today to make sandwiches for a variety of people. If I could make one for you, I would, but I can't. We've got a show to do. <clears throat> I mean, Jeff would make one for you. <laughs> Roll the open. Here we go. Have a seat. Have a seat. Save your energy. We have an hour. I said if I was going to do TV, I was never not going to be myself. Where are the people who are a little bit different? You're sitting next to one on the couch. So let's just say that. Try not to suck today. Now, here's Jason. show hello welcome to the show hi everybody thank you jeff thank you welcome to the jason show i'm jace you picked a good day to be here that's right we have good we have wine we have wine that's right we have aaron schwab filling in and and we have this let's start with this come back to the tv Come back to the TV because you need to see this video. Security camera catches a bear. Look at this audience. Breaking into a house through a small window. Oh my gosh. Look at that. This is in Colorado. Girl, he wants that food. Now watch this. He comes out with food. That's right. He got, it's a box of Capri Suns. He got exactly what he was in there for. He raided the fridge and the pantry after, look, and he got more. He got more. After stealing some food, he escaped right out of the very same, very small window. Right? Right? That truly looks like me breaking into a Chinese buffet. Let me tell you. Start the show, Leo. Let's do it. Here we go, everybody. Well, let me fix this. Ladies and gentlemen, filling in once again for Kendall. Give it up for Aaron Schwab, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello, Schwab. How you doing? I'm great. Welcome to uh, welcome to the day. I know I look like a country garden. Is it like is it like attention deficit distracting? Uh, There's let me a lot see. happening. Leo takes seven. Let's look at Aaron. You look great. No, it's beautiful. It's bright. It's cheery. No, I know. you look great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you look good. How you doing? You feeling good today? I do. I have a little bit of a... <laughs> a little raspiness? Yeah, it's like allergies and yeah. whatever I get it. It's, it's going around. Like I've been saying, we've had cancer. I'm just grateful for the people that are here today. Every There's day. That's right. Our studio audience today. We've had cancellations. We've had cancellations every day, so I'm grateful to the people that are here. Mm -hmm. And also, okay, this is a story that you know I'm obsessed with. Delta Airlines. Oh, so no. thank you. The front row is nodding their head. So you all know that last week or two was two weeks ago, mm -hmm. Delta uh, big wig Ed, I call him Mr. Ed. Oh. Um, Mr. Ed decided that he would make a whole bunch of changes uh, to their Delta loyalty program, Sky Miles. Basically, making it so even if you had a Delta co branded credit card, you would need to spend $60,000, $75,000, $150,000 to get like the bottom basement amount of benefits for being loyal to that company. Well, thank you for booing. Well, immediately. <laughs> Immediately after it was announced, as you can imagine, the backlash was swift. The backlash was constant. I heard from several people, several people in the know that say, oh, uh, Ed heard about all of this. Well, it seems that he did because Mr. Ed released a statement yesterday. Yep. There he is. Right there. There's Mr. Ed right there. What's he say? Hello, I made a mistake. Hello, people are canceling my credit card. That's right. So Mr. Ed said he was at an event yesterday and he mentioned, and it was in front of a friendly audience, I believe, and Mr. Ed got 
booed oh. and hissed at when he mentioned the changes to Sky Miles. Dude, Mr. Ed got booed. So then, oh. I believe the story, I want to give credit because we're losing our local newspapers. I think it was the Atlanta Constitution that broke the story, the, the local paper in Atlanta, a hub that said Delta has admitted uh, they are going to roll back some of the changes, that they Woo! went a little too far. Now, look, I will believe it when I see it. Oh. Uh, our thrifty traveler friend says what we can expect is maybe lowering the spending levels. But we'll take whatever because this is proof. This is proof that the big companies will listen to you. Disney roll back prices for some things. Delta has. So if you are outraged, the only thing I will say, I did hear from a couple flight attendants that said that uh, guests were like yelling at them. Oh. Don't yell. Don't yell at the Delta employees, please. I, I heard from more than several. Don't, it's not their fault. Write to Mr. Ed. <laughs> Write to Mr. Ed. Yes. That's right. Write to him. That's the guy. Okay. Let's get started, everybody. It's time for the hot dish. Roll in, Leo. Here we go. It's time for the dish. Get ready for the return of late night. Finally, with the writer strike officially over, late night shows will be back next week. Fallon, Kimmel, the Jimmies, Colbert, Seth Meyers will all return with their shows Monday night. Writers will be back on the job this week preparing for the shows. It's not clear who the guests will be since actors, as you know, are still on strike and can't promote their movies or shows right now. John Oliver will actually be the first late night host back with last week tonight. Return this Sunday night on HBO. This is why this is actually a good sign that SAG-AFTRA will wrap up their negotiation soon mm -hmm. because two things. First, they set a date. They're meeting on Monday. That's confirmed. And also, you know as well as I do, that because the bread and butter of late night shows are guests, are celebrity guests, uh -huh. they wouldn't turn the lights back on at the hotel unless they had pretty good information that SAG-AFTRA were going to settle. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't start the engine running. Because you, first of all, you can't, there's not enough musicians who know how to speak adequately and be entertaining to like just interview them. Yeah, no. I am a musician and I'm here to tell you. Yes. Like, there's not enough of them that aren't like, I'll just sing a song and then they come to the couch and they're like, what's up? What's up, like, yeah. Like, you know, it's like, you have to have people that can have a conversation with you, so. It's gonna happen. I, 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 I would lay 30 bucks in Vegas, but oh. this time next week, as we're sitting here, there will be a deal on the table for SAG after to approve. I really I do think that. I hope so. I do, I do. I hope so. Yeah. Think I, about all of our friends that are SAG and after that are that are not able to work yep. right now. And want so. them back to work, and we want mm -hmm. shows. Next up, from TV to movies, it could be, here's another thing I would take to the bank in cash. This is going to be, I'm not even going to say could, this is going to be the next animated hit for Mickey Mouse, for Disney. Oh. A new trailer just dropped for the movie. It's called Wish, and it comes from the team behind the mega hit Frozen. Now, Leo, before you roll this, I want you to watch this. Come back, because I am, you know, oh, my God, what the hell's up with my chair? Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord, I've been losing weight. I mean, what the hell's happening? I think you're fine. I think I'm fine. Anyway, um, <laughs> I have been hearing from Disney people, live television, uh, that this this looks so good that this could be the next mega hit. Look at this. Last night, I made a wish on a star. Uh, <laughs> and the star answered. I'm talking. I am talking. Ha! Who knew my voice would be this low? I believe I have just been threatened. Who would dare threaten you? <laughs> I have no response to that. So <laughs> there is a traitor amongst us. Find Asha. It's a dead end. With unsanded mahogany. <laughs> oh, good find, Valentino. My butt found it. If the voice of the heroine is familiar, that's Oscar winner Ariana DeBose <sighs> of voicing the main character who makes a powerful wish and must try and save her community from, of course, the evil king. Wish hits theaters on Thanksgiving. Uh, one of my friends was at D23, uh, the Disney convention. They showed, I believe, like an extended clip of it, and she said people were gobsmacked. The animation is on another level, a new technology, and she said what they saw 
was breathtaking. She used the word breathtaking. Is it a musical or is it's it a musical? Just a, oh, yeah. It's a musical. Okay. Yeah. I'm ready for this. I, I Disney needs a big hit. Yes. This could be it. I'm always up for a new Disney movie. Always, yeah. always up for the more of the singing of cheese ball songs. It makes yeah, me happy. That's right. This could be what we they need wish. the next Let It Go because that one is it's 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 gone they, now. Yeah, right? they need it's to not as let popular. That go. So we need yeah. to oh yeah. let that go. That's right. Said. Next, <laughs> it seems Americans love naked people. Uh, yesterday. <laughs> Especially row one and two here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, oh, I'm getting I'm getting wolf whistled at. I know. Yeah. You don't want to see that, believe me. I told you earlier this week about the show Naked Attraction that's available to stream on Max. It's a British dating show. Here it is, everybody, where a single person must choose from six totally naked strangers. Well, it quietly debuted last week on Max, and now, like a week later. It is number one. It is the most popular series on Max. Oh, yes. Are you surprised? I, I am surprised. I'm going to be really honest with you. Because for some reason, um, all the people in the United States generally are like, naked people, what? Oh, right? Yeah. And like everywhere else in the world, they're like, woo, that's all right. We all got bodies. We all got bits and pieces. I, Let's see them, right? It doesn't matter. I, I just. So was, I am surprised. Yeah. I just, I, I didn't come from a pearl clutching family you know what I mean I, I, I literally I do know what you mean I do I yeah didn't either. my my mom is gonna just kill me here but I, they didn't make things taboo because my mom was smart this is a compliment to my parents because mm -hmm. if they make something taboo I would want to find out about it more we had in the curio cabinet my mother uh, from her bachelorette party had a glass that when you poured hot water or a glass the man's clothes would disappear hey! on the glass so you know, and then my dad had a female version that obviously I didn't drink out of. But anyway, yeah. Um, but I, you know, so what I'm trying to tell you, boobs don't scare me. I mean, you know, so there's the code of the day. But I, boobs don't scare me. So I want to make you a T-shirt immediately. Boobs don't scare I me. Do. Yeah, they don't. We need to get that up on the Jason Show merch. That's wall. right. Just boobs. boobs don't scare me. Yeah, the Jason Show. Perfect. Yeah, there we go. We'll be right back. Back in a moment. Stay with us. <laughs> Well, they don't. We're so uptight about that stuff. And we're back, friends. We are back. Thanks for being here. Well, Real Housewives, it turns out, they're just like us. Okay. Well, at least like me and maybe Aaron. Ramona Singer was a surprise guest. Ramona, if you don't know, is uh, OG from New York. Was a surprise guest on Watch What Happens Live last night and talked about re-watching old seasons of her show just like I do, like season one. That is our Late Night Rewind. that I have a missed call from Ramona. I listened to the message. She is, because who else would you call but me? Because she couldn't figure out how to get Peacock on her TV. Come on. So I'm the tech guy now. Um, and she was looking to watch. <laughs> it's, it's so brilliant. I want to watch um, season one of The She was looking to watch the season Rainy one of yeah. Roni. What did you think when you saw the early okay. episodes? Oh my, oh my God. God. Yeah. Yeah. I watched episode one and two. Yeah. So episode two was I didn't invite Jill to something and she yes. was really angry. Yeah, to your lunch. Oh yeah. 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 And I then I, you know, I had this little outfit on. It was like a I was going to a Sony party and I wanted to wear this Dolce top that kind of looked like lingerie. Yeah. And my daughter was very proper and her probably like, you can't go out like that. So I had to sneak it out like a teenage daughter under my shirt and put it on. That's <laughs> well. And that was Ramona. I do. I, I rewatch the seasons all the time. Ramona will be featured in the upcoming season of Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip with members of her old cast and a mix of other New Yorkers. Next up, from embarrassing moments to celebrities in real life, Dax Holt is answering it all in his latest podcast. L audience, give it up for the host of the Hollywood Raw podcast, live from L.A., it's Dax. Hi, buddy. Hello, hello. Good morning, Jason. Good morning, audience. Good morning, Dax. You're not in your uh, you're not in your presidential suite anymore. I see. <laughs> Move back to the office. I got the downgrade back to the office instead of the uh, the master bedroom. Uh, okay, so it was your ask us anything. I love these types of shows. Ask us anything podcast episode. How did that go for you? 
it, I, it's so funny how people are so excited to be able to ask whatever question they want to. So we, we gather all these questions on our private Facebook group called Off the Record, and we let them submit them, and we say, nothing is off the record. Ask us whatever you want. And they're asking everything from what was it like at TMZ? Why did you leave TMZ? Uh, what was the craziest story that you've never talked about publicly? You I mean, they, they kind of run the gamut of everything people might want to know about us, personal life questions, everything. It was a really fun episode. We did that episode and then we did one episode right before that that I don't think I talked about last because I wasn't on last week um, was the the stories that we couldn't believe were true when they first broke and kind of what our relationship was with the story like even the chris brown rihanna incident remember when that happened and like how it was so wild at the yeah. time that like couldn't believe it and well, how i was you know behind the scenes getting photos and information and helping break this massive massive story at the time but even down to like Britney Spears shaving her head and how I remember the exact moment that I got the call and had to get the photos of her with the bald head. That was a really just interesting episode that I really want people to go listen to because I think you'll also reminisce about, yeah. wow, that story was wild and you can relate to that. Um, when the person asked you why you left TMZ, it, you told them it was because you were stealing office supplies, right? I mean, that's why. 100%. Yeah, yeah you did tell them <laughs> that. Harvey caught me in yeah. the, the supply closet stealing yeah. post-its and immediately yep. got rid of me. I just, um, I just, I want to, I just wanted to clear that up, Dax, for people that didn't know. <laughs> but no, but one of the questions, one of the questions that someone asked that I love, and I don't know this yeah. and I talk to you every week, what celeb is the most different from their public perspective? Persona, and your answer surprised me. Um, Paris. I think, uh, yes, Paris was my answer on that one. I think that people really uh, are kind of fooled by her on stage persona, which is the, the ditzy blonde, when in fact she is so business savvy, so smart, kind, down to earth. I have nothing but nice things to say about Paris Hilton. I think she is one of the, the greatest people in Hollywood. And I think that people either don't believe or they've gotten wrapped up into what the what the public yeah. said about her or what the media said about her which is just a very different story you got a question from one of our regulars uh phil jones oh. the biggest screw up you ever had interviewing with this uh, uh interviewing a celeb and it was you and pamela anderson what did you do dax uh, well i was doing a red carpet and this was my first red carpet i've ever done back in the day with tmz i was at like a peter red carpet and I was so excited that I like went to like grab her arm to like because I was just talking to her and I grabbed her arm and I apparently squeezed too hard and she like screamed and yelled. <laughs> she was like, "Ow, oh, you hurt me!" What are you doing? And I think I was just so in the moment that I was like excited and I felt I, I feel dumb to this day thinking about that oh, moment. I don't mean like, to make it worse, but I'm do? embarrassed for you on that one. That's how that's. Oh, yeah. by the way, Jason, well, I, I don't normally. Pro, uh, like promote what we're going to have on or who we're going to have on the next week. But I have to tell you, Wednesday as episode is going to be great. We got Chris Kirkpatrick from NSYNC on, and we talked oh. all about the reunion, the VMAs, what it was like backstage, what the possibilities are for the future. So I, oh. I want you guys to set your alarms. On Wednesday, we're Wednesday. releasing that episode with Chris. I can't wait. Thank you, buddy. Have a good week. Give your family my best. Find Hollywood Raw wherever you find your pro uh, podcast and to hit that subscribe button. Uh, did you, I, I'm trying to think of a moment that's embarrassing. Well, I, I mentioned it in Friday's show. I talked about my still my most embarrassing moment with it. Well, one of them is flipping over backwards while interviewing Britney Spears. I flipped oh, yeah. over in my chair. Yeah, yeah. And then I stepped on Gwen Stefani's hair extension. Yep. Um, uh, Matthew McConaughey, I interviewed him in a fake locker room. And I was sitting on the oh. bench. And he put his leg up. I'm on the bench, and he's hovering over me standing. And his crotchal region was, like, right here. Like, right here. And I didn't know where to look. I kept going like this, like, do I ask... Do I ask this a question or do I? Oh, but, but this is oh, right here. I don't know. I didn't know what to talk to. You know. You didn't know what to talk to? Why well, I me? Mean, let's be clear. I mean. I mean, if something is that present and in your space, you thank can't you. do anything about it. That's right. Woo! Woo! More dish for you now. A new book is telling the behind the speaking of behind the scenes, the, the, uh, the behind the scenes story of a movie comedy classic, and you won't believe who tried out for the lead. More than 43 years ago, people were laughing 
out loud in theaters or cinemas at this. The stewardess said both pilots. Can you fly this plane and land it? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Yes. Still holds up. That's oh. just one of the famous scenes from Airplane, a spoof of Hollywood disaster movies. To say it was a huge hit in 80 is putting it mildly, and it's still, Jeff just rewatched clips of it. It's portions of it hold up. I mean, there are portions now that are highly inappropriate, but you know, anyway. Now a new book is exposing never, be heard, uh, never, be heard, never heard before stories about the making. It's called Surely You Can't Be Serious, The True Story, The True History of Airplane. The book comes out next week and is written by the comedy trio that made the movie. And one of the things we love, you won't believe who tried out for the lead role of Ted Stryker, who played by Robert Hayes. David Letterman. Oh! In the book, Dave says his agent forced him to do a screen test for the movie. Dave says he kept telling them, hey, I can't act. And finally, they agreed he couldn't <laughs> act, yeah. They agreed. That's good. Yeah. But he wasn't like set out to be an actor, right? He like did stand up and then he went did, to do talk yeah, shows. Yeah, he Is was a right? weatherman in Indiana, moved to yeah. LA to do comedy, but he was he was in Mary Tyler Moore's short term variety show called Mary. Really? He was in that with Michael Keaton. If you you if uh -oh. you want to go down a rabbit hole, put in Mary, David Letterman. They do musical routines and just watch Letterman's face. He looks miserable. Oh. Like it's you can't see Dave doing dance routines. Not necessarily, no. no. The book also, nope. yeah, the book also reveals Sigourney Weaver and Shelley Long auditioned for the role of the flight attendant Elaine, played uh, by the legendary Julie Haggerty. Nobody, I no. can't see anybody but Julie in that role. Aren't there like movies like that where you find out who the other person, people were that like almost got it and you're like, I am so glad that is not what it was. Yes. Because this movie would not be what it is. Julie's voice, yep. you know what I mean? It was her voice. But she's like a magical unicorn of amazingness because she can do that so honestly and so effortlessly. Yeah. And I, if I could, I would try, but I cannot. That's not how I roll. Oh. But it's amazing. She's hilarious. Oh, just all the cameos in that movie. It's so good. Now, Next, the rock star transformation of country queen Dolly Parton continues ahead of the release of her new album. Dolly just released the video now for her latest cover of a 90s classic. Let's watch this. And so I wake up in the morning and I step outside and I take a deep breath and wonder why and I scream at the top of my lungs what's going on. Dolly with Linda Perry from Four Non Blondes, who originally performed the song. I I love Dolly so very much, and I hate saying this, but I gotta be honest, I don't love this album, and I haven't loved this 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 turn for her. I, I don't like this. You, you're a singer. Okay, so I love Dolly Parton. I, we all do. In ev a hundred million ways, right? The thing that I love about Dolly Parton that we all love about her is her authenticity to what she creates. Even if she's covering something, even if she's taking something that was already done. Um, but what she didn't do in this album is she didn't make these songs her own songs. Like she's doing, it's like they got a karaoke track and then she sang to that. Yeah. Which I think is so strange. You For know? her. I think that it would read so, how, wouldn't you love to hear how she hears those lyrics and how she hears that melody to hear like how she interprets it? Okay, because. because that's what I want to hear. Because, and I know we have to go, but because, let me, let's use, here's an analogy. Yeah. Let's use a Dolly song. Think of Whitney Houston with Dolly's right. I Will Always Love You. Whitney didn't just re-record Do he, she actually told Kevin Costner no. Right. Kevin Costner played that song for her, and, and Whitney goes, mm -hmm. I don't hear myself. And Kevin gave her the advice that Kevin goes, to make it yours. And then Whitney did, and then bada boom, bada bing, here we are. Right, and if if Dolly Parton would have sung Whitney Houston's arrangement of that, it would not have sounded authentic even a little bit. But her words, like when she trusts and believes her words, which she does, she's like she's like the most she's I, Mozart. Amazing. She's country Mozart. Yes. yes. So I just wish she would have done that. That's, that's such I a do good have point. a friend though who works with Ann Wilson who talked to me all about her duet with Ann Wilson and recording that because he knows. 
Oh, Woo-hoo. we still Amazing. love you, Dolly. We're going to take a break. Uh, we love wine, too, right, audience? That's hey. right. <laughs> Leslie Miller and more when we return. Back in a moment. Back after this. Stay right there. Coming up in just a few minutes, our wine diva, Leslie Miller, is back with us. And today she's debunking more wine myths and answering more wine questions. For instance, why you should never match the color of your wine to the color of your food. And then, my latest best thing ever, a limited series on Apple TV that I love and I know you are going to love. You better work when we come back. Welcome back to the show, everybody. When it comes to pairing wine with food, what do you know? What do you know? Really? That's a question. What do you know? There's a good chance uh, what you think is completely wrong. I mean that with love. <laughs> Here to break down the basics of wine pairing and correct some wine myths is our wine diva audience from Amuse Wine. Give it up for Leslie Miller, everyone. Um, now, before we begin, I just want to say the studio audience is revolting. Mm -hmm. uh, they have noticed that there are uh, uh, the perfect number of glasses mm -hmm. to the perfect number of them. Uh, yeah. So yes, yeah. <laughs> I reminded them that HR watches every one of these episodes. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, the, what are we going to start with? The myth of match the color yes. of wine to f your food. Right. Actually, Erin was saying that she matches the color of the wine to her outfit. <laughs> Anybody surprised by that? Raise your hand. No, right, nobody. So, you know, old school is, you know, pair white to fish and red to meat, and that is totally wrong. It's all about the preparation of the dish. Because I admit, I even do that. It's yes. easy. Like, oh, if I'm going to have cod or a sea bass. You just do white, I'm going right? to do white with it. But if you're going to blacken your cod, yeah. now that's a completely different flavor, right? That's a good so point. So you could have some spice components. So I did start with, you know, red with meat, white with fish, you know, really classic. I just want you to try this little Savion Blanc because I absolutely love it. This one? Um, yes, it is so delicious. It's Spy Valley. It's New Zealand. We think about New Zealand. Sometimes we do think about Kim Crawford, which is very magical mass produced but this is just so delicious and so bright and oh. so zesty and I just Ooh, daddy happy <laughs> oh yeah get that one right there right there get that shot Leo look at that spy valley spy valley I want I, to quote Liz Lemon I want to go to there yes, yes. <laughs> and when you think about this this is really like beautiful kind of bright citrus so pair this actually to maybe a dish where you're throwing in some extra citrus so you're maybe doing like a white fish but you're throwing in in, like sectors of lime or citrus or things like that and now you have a perfect pairing oh i i, I could just drink this no yeah, i mean exactly. i don't care what i pair this with that's so that delicious. is a good wine i know it's okay. so pretty so again think about the flavors in the wine and how you're actually going to pair that to the accoutrements of the dish okay what's okay. next which one's next all right we're going to talk about um you know if you have something that's fried spicy or sweet okay. now fried this is why the that's a wide range yes. fried <laughs> spicy or sweet right and in the fried department this is why when you go to a ballpark this is why the beer people always win because they have bubbles in everything right okay. but fried with uh, a little bit of a bubble and you know what pick up any bubble to go along with fried I love french fries and chicken wings and all the things even nachos with just a great little bubbly like a great little kava here so delish really okay yeah. just generally speaking yes just to be safe just to be safe yeah bubbly that's a with good... fried food okay yes. all right and now when you think about spicy so now think about like your you ordered out Thai food food and now you went to like five pepper hot yes four or five pepper hot now there is that old school this is one of the old school pairings that does stick you have to go with something super spicy okay. and something that has a little titch of sweetness to it okay now I'm gonna give you Moscato and you're gonna be like oh my gosh Moscato. Moscato, right but now we don't want to think about like the you know yellow tail down under Moscato it's a little it's really sticky sweet this is from Oregon so I always describe this as kind of like a dry key lime pie it's you would be right yeah oh, oh. oh. I don't hate this 
Okay. And I don't, and I don't like yes. Moscato you at don't like all, sweet like at not all. even a little bit. Right. This has like a little pepper. This has yeah. something. There's an element of. It. There's a little zip to it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So imagine that with something like a green curry or something like that. So again, spice. Okay. And that now sweet. Also, when you think about that too, you don't want to pair up something super sticky sweet. Everybody always thinks about port, but you can actually do something that has like a richness to it, like a full-bodied cab can also go along with something sweet. Okay. All right. So now when we're talking about like dressings, this is something that was we talked a lot about like um, you know salad dressings, things that have a vinaigrette to them. This this was something when we went to psalm school it was like number one what do you do with all this acid on your plate or something that's pickled or something that has all this like so if you're sitting there eating in your today food. at lunch you're sitting there eating a salad uh, with grilled chicken and a nice sharp vinaigrette this is it yes yeah, so okay. here's where you pair acid to acid now acidic white grapes are generally light-bodied but grow up in cooler climates and this is Gruner Veltliner which I say to people all the time this is your get out of jail free grape this is what what do you mean meaning like if you're in a pickle literally this is a the pickle one to do. you're in a pickle or you're like with green beans or all the things that you think you can't pair to Gruner Veltliner is like your secret Let me say weapon Gruner Veltliner. Veltliner. <laughs> Wiener? Is it Gruner Ve Wiener? Wiener. What? Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> 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 okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna learn how to pronounce the Wiener wine, and we'll be right back. Back in a moment. Stay with us. More with Leslie. Gruner. Veltliner. Go back to the show, everyone. We're here with our wine expert, wine diva. Leslie Miller. Okay, I said it. The audience was with me. I learned how to say it. Gruner Viltliner. That's yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. You got it. What do we have next? Okay, so we're going to talk about, this is going to lead into what I get, a, I get this question all the time. What about cuts of meat? And everybody just think just because you're going with beef that you have to go straight to the Cabernet department and that is actually false. So, so if you're getting a steak, you do not necessarily have to get cab. No. Okay. In fact, this has a lot of conversation based around the content of fat in the meat. So these, this is important. This is really fun to kind of learn. So one rule is that fat loves tannin. So take like a porterhouse or like a prime rib, something that has some richness to it, a ribeye. Yeah. Now you need a grape that has that compound in it, a bigger, richer grape like Cabernet. Cabernet and ribeye, BFFs until the end of time. Cabernet, remember, the write that down, everybody. Yes. If you're ordering a ribeye, yes. ribeye and Cabernet, BFFs forever. So it's that fat in the ribeye, and it's the tannin. It's a compound. You're not allergic to it. People think they are in a grape like Cabernet. Okay, that's a okay. good, that's a good easy thing that everyone yes. can remember. Yes. I love those types yes. of tips. Now, if you're doing a fillet, you don't actually have any fat in the fillet, so and I'm now a fillet you have a kind of guy. I like a fillet. Same. Yeah. And now you don't want that tannin because there's nothing really inside to really kind of grab a hold of. So you actually want to pair something like Pinot Noir. Okay, so yes. write this down. Yes. You're ordering a fillet. Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir, they're yes. BFFs. It's like Taylor Swift and me. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, TT is, we're, we're best friends. Yes, that's okay, right. yeah. So you get a little Pinot Noir and also, you know, a fillet, so great. Now, if you throw in some mushrooms and other things like that, the accoutrements here with Pinot, I mean, on fire. Oh, this is good. Oh, it's a good Pinot. I love this That's one. a good Pinot. What brand, what is that? This is Peter Zemmer. And, okay. you know, it, in Italy, they call this grape Pinot Nero. It's just a synonym for Pinot, Pinot Noir. And what I love about this is we don't always think about Pinot Noir from Italy, but it's northern Italy. It's actually near the Dolomites, and I just love it. It's so pretty. It's so lean. It's really good. It has, like, great little herbal notes to it. So fun. Okay. We have one okay. more. One more. And, you know, I'm just going to give you pink because you know how we love our pink bubbles I love here. pink, uh, pink yes. bubbles. Are just, yeah. And this is like, hey, you're looking at, like, tailgating food because this is that time of year where we are really piling, piling up on all of, like, the nachos, the fries, all the things that, you know, you're thinking about. And, again, people go back to beer. 
but my tip, always pick a dry sparkling rosé. You can always. never go wrong during football season with a dry sparkling rosé. Because let me just speak for myself. I mean, eventually I think I'm going to go to my very first NFL game ever this season. Oh. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think I'm going to go. <laughs> um, FYI, if the bosses could help me with that. But anyway, um, but I, I don't want to throw in the cooler. Right. I'm not a beer kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So I can throw that in. I will look real funny tailgating like this. You know I what I mean? But yeah, but. I do it. And you know what? It does. It goes well with like any style of chicken wing. It goes well with those nachos. It goes great with hot dogs and things like that. What is this called again? This is Clayto Chiarelli. This is a dry sparkling Lambrusco, and that's a really good tip, too. I mean, this thing is like $16, and I drink it a mm, couple times a week. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> again, we're neighbors. You could invite me over. I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Colin's gone for the next few days. Give me a call. <laughs> I'll be over with the card again. Thank yes, you. Bring yeah. the card over. <laughs> Give it up for Leslie Miller, everyone. For more information, go to AmuseWine.com and visit her wine shop, Sit Better, in the North Loop of Minneapolis. We'll be right back. Back after this. This is good, though. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Don't clap, Aaron. You're so used to clapping. <laughs> next year, or I'm sorry, next month marks 33 years since the release of an iconic song that helped define the early 90s. And the music video for that song may be even more iconic. Watch. Freedom 90 was released in, well, October of 90. He refused to appear in the music video, so it featured five of the biggest supermodels on the planet lip syncing to his song. The reason I'm showing you that video is because it features prominently in a fantastic new docuseries that I'm obsessed with, Schwabi is obsessed with. Mm -hmm. It's on Apple TV Plus, and I'm naming it my latest best thing ever. Yes. Without a doubt. It's called The Supermodels. This four-part series focuses on four women who, this is overused, but defined a generation. Cindy Crawford, the icon, Naomi Campbell, Christy Turlington, and, oh, Linda Evangelista. Look. There was a feeling about them that they wanted more. I was not seen as a person who had a voice in her own destiny. He said you should lose five pounds. I got scared I didn't belong. But Linda's a chameleon. She could really become whatever the photographer wanted her to become. I would do all these great shows, wear all these beautiful dresses, but then it would come time to the advertising and I would not be included. I wasn't going to be bullied for the color of my skin. Mm -hmm. And she was not. She didn't tolerate it. Uh, I finished watching the last episode earlier this week. There are four. Aaron also watched it. We've been waiting to be together to talk about this because we're both obsessed. I talk enough, and mm -hmm. I'm curious of what you have to say because you said I, as a woman in her 50s, mm -hmm. you have a very specific, you had a very specific feeling about the show. I series. have. It, it is. They were the. They were sort of what was beautiful in every magazine that we saw. It wasn't like a teen magazine. So like as a younger person looking at that stuff, though, that was who I wanted to grow up to be. And it wasn't because they were in some way perfection. It was because there was something magical about them. There was an energy and an excitement. And uh, Linda Evangelista was my favorite. And mm. uh, the androgyny that was Linda Evangelista was so like welcoming and and like exciting that, that, it, that she could just become anything. The chameleon aspect and, of her. And I literally had pictures of these women like cut out on my walls of my room. And like in my scrapbook, there's a picture of Cindy Crawford in a wedding dress that I was like, this is the wedding dress I want to get married in. So like that's, those are actual things that like they talk about in the show, but also to see them and how they have gracefully and excellently aged into these amazing women and to find out what was important and how they supported each other. That's 
and how I kind they were with each other and what great friends they were, it it made more sense to me why I was drawn to them because we're drawn to people that are that. Like that's what we're drawn to is love and light and energy that way. And to know that that's what we saw in those pictures um, and it was real and not manufactured is magical. Because you I know, think. I'm sure the tabloid press back then wanted to pit them against each other. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they did. And they even acknowledged there was healthy comp professional competition. But my biggest take, I had a couple takeaways, but I'll piggyback off what you said. What I just walked away feeling so great about was the fact that their friendship was real and my favorite example was and I got to be brief on this Aaron and I could literally do a half hour special on this oh. we really could but I'll be brief um, they stuck together there was a time where and you can't even believe this now that fashion houses did not want Naomi Campbell on the runway mm -hmm. they didn't want Naomi Campbell on the on their on their product line Christy and Linda they wanted them to and Linda and Christy looked at the fashion houses and said, uh, you want us? You have to take yep. Naomi. Oh, I love it. You have to have Naomi. Mm -hmm. And it's just one of the many examples. Getting back to the music video, the four women were all starting to hit it big when they appeared in the music video. And the great Naomi Campbell tells a really funny story how it came to be. Listen. Mm -hmm. We get this phone call that George Michael wants to shoot us in his video. We made a decision. I will do it. I'm going to do it. Yes, okay, I'll do it. Freedom. Everything changed. Freedom. You can start to call the shots and be an active participant in your career. All of a sudden, we were the physical representations of power. I wanted to go further. I wanted to push the envelope. Soon after the video became popular, one designer booked all four women for his show and played that song. And from that moment, again, in entertainment, there are a few, few moments where somebody's career is one way, and then after a moment, it's another way. It was like a light switch. That was a light switch moment mm -hmm. for those four women. Yeah. Stratif stratospheric fame that I don't even think we have now. I mean, the Kardashians in a way, but they were, we, we lived it. I was looking at Colin yeah. going, I was there. I mean, I was, I, we lived this. Man, we knew every word to every, every bit. I knew every head turn, every like, <laughs> you know what they would do in it? Because we studied them. We yes. loved them. They were so cool. Like, they were the epitome of cool. Oh. And they still are. Like, that's the coolest part is they're still the epitome Beautiful. of cool. Beautiful. Yeah. Again, yeah. we have to go. We're sad that we have to go because we could do a half-hour special on this. Uh, but we haven't even scratched the surface, which is good because the supermodels you should watch on Apple TV+. Plus. That's why it's my latest best thing ever. We'll be right back. Back in a moment, everyone. Back in a moment. I want to be friends with Linda. Welcome back. Let's get to know. Let's get to know our next JVIP of the week. Meet Wendy uh, from Wabasha, uh, Minnesota. She loves all of our segments and the show and also loves uh, that we are real and down to earth around here. We will, we try to be. Wendy gets a Jason Show mug, also entered to win the monthly grand prize. That includes being a VIP guest in our audience, a $150 gift card to Becker Furniture World, and a $150 gift card to the Institute of Advanced Aesthetics. We will be back to wrap things up after this. Back in a moment. We decided we're going to spit. <laughs> I am trying really hard not to clap. It's I really know. hard for We me. should explain that. So Erin is our audience coordinator as well. So she m claps with the audience. And we've gotten, a lot of, we've gotten a lot of feedback of people going, um, could you please tell Erin to not clap because the microphone is right there. So yeah. So Erin so trying not to guys. clap is the best thing ever. Yeah. No, but sorry. we were just talking um, more little anecdotes about supermodels. We didn't even get into... Um, the openness that they talked about, the, the abuse that they suffered mm -hmm. uh, from people that they loved and knew, yeah. but also the supporters, the photographers that meant so much to Naomi. And yep. it's just so multi-layered. 
it it doesn't seem it it isn't what you think it's gonna be, right? It, right. You think that it's gonna be this like fluffy. Oh, it's all about the supermodels, but it changes your whole perspective on what what modeling is. Yes. It's a job. And what it meant to fashion and the culture in general. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm chatting with one of my buddies, travel blogger Molly McAwesome. She's sharing her favorite spots in Orlando that tourists do not know about. That oh. and more tomorrow. But right now that's gonna do it for us. If you're watching and you're a kid that's being bullied, go out there and be yourself because nobody can tell you. You're doing it wrong. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. You can clap.